Hi, I'm Martha Apple, Vice President and Designated Broker, and I'm here today to talk to you about buyer's non-refundable earnest money. We are seeing many, many contracts where the agents are writing in the buyer's earnest money to go non-refundable or to go hard at some point in the transaction. And many times, unfortunately, the agents are writing in incorrect language or ambiguous language that uh, unfortunately, when the title company makes their, their decision on what to do with the earnest money, many times they either make the wrong decision or they hold the earnest money because of the ambiguity in the language that the agent had written in. So I'm here today to give you some pointers on how you can avoid that situation. A few weeks ago, I had sent out an email to all agents uh, regarding some non-refundable language that I put together with not only uh, Equity Title, Doug Bergner at Equity Title, but also our uh, outside legal counsel assisted us as well. But the idea is we could come up with some language that is as whole proof as possible on what is the intent of the buyer's uh, earnest money going non-refundable. If the earnest money is going to be tied to the end of the inspection period when it would go non-refundable, then I highly advise agents to use the AER's additional clause addendum. One of those clauses in that addendum, exactly that point on where the earnest money is going to go non-refundable at the end of the inspection period, which as we know, the intent of, of writing that is the end of the inspection period when all the requested repairs have been negotiated between buyer and seller. So it actually goes back to the buyer disapproval section in the purchase contract. Non-refundable earnest money is tied to the inspection period, but if it is going to be non-refundable at any other time, like some type of event or at the uh, certain, a date certain, then we have come up with, with language that you can use that, again, is, a, is essentially whole proof. The, uh, the problem is when agents start writing in language, they forget things. They will say, buyer's earnest money shall go non-refundable at the end of the appraisal. Um, well, once the appraisal contingency is waived. Be careful on that because if you have anything that is prior to the appraisal, FHA and VA by law states that re uh, non-refundable earnest money or earnest money cannot go non-refundable until after the appraisal. So the appraisal comes in and everything works out and now all of a sudden the seller, for instance, wants the buyer's earnest money to go hard. So we've come up with this language that again is pretty well, uh, whole proof. What that language says is buyer's earnest money should become non-refundable on, again, a, a particular date or example was at the end of the appraisal uh, or once the appraisal contingency has been waived. Unless buyer elects to cancel the contract pursuant to Section 8B. Everybody says, what is 8B? 8B is the risk of loss section in the purchase contract and essentially that what that says is if there's any damage to the house like an act of God, um, a horrible hailstorm, uh, fire, and it causes more than 10% of the sale price in damage, then either the buyer or the seller can cancel the contract at that point. But if you don't have language that addresses that in your non-refundable uh, earnest money language, then yes, the buyer can cancel due to that risk of loss, but it doesn't say that the buyer's non-refundable earnest money then will become refundable. So we put it in there by saying, unless the buyer elects to cancel pursuant to 8B, and again, that's the risk of loss section, or if escrow fails to close due to seller's breach or seller's inability to close for any reason. Then we go on to say, at the time the earnest money becomes non-refundable, buyer acknowledges that, and this is very important, A, all buyer contingencies in the contract are deemed to be satisfied, removed, and or waived, and B, if buyer fails to close escrow for any reason other than seller's breach or seller's inability to close, then the earnest money deposit will be released to the seller at the seller's discretion. I know it sounds a little wordy, but there's a lot of information that we need to get in there that they understand that they waive all their contingencies going forward at this point, which includes the financing contingency. And if um, the appraisal hasn't happened yet, and again, can't be an FHA or VA loan, but uh, and the earnest money is going non-refundable at that point, then you'd also be waiving the appraisal contingency as well. Um, we, it's all in zip, in zip forms. We have that clause in zip forms. It's under the clause manager in zip forms. Every agent who has access to zip forms can go to the clause manager and pull that clause out. And then all they have to do is go into the additional terms and conditions section of the purchase contract, 
you click that clause and it automatically um, imports right into the, pur the purchase contract. It's very important that they use this language and not to write your own language on any, any, any time. That's why we have all these clauses, that's why we have these forms, and we want to make sure that we protect our, our sellers and our buyers as much as we can. So thank you, and um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. For more information, you can go to our website, insightazmoves.com, and all our forms are located there, or obviously they're on zip forms, and please, please, please um, tune in to my Ask the Broker webinars that I have once a month, of which you are receiving emails on when those are scheduled. So thanks again.